Thank you.
Good morning, and welcome to St. Olaf for the celebration of the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time. A special welcome to any visitors among us. We also welcome all who are watching this liturgy via the live stream and the television broadcast. Our presider is Father Michael Krenick. As a precaution against the spread of COVID-19, congregational singing is discouraged. You may gently speak the text or hum softly. Please wear your mask throughout the liturgy and maintain social distancing. With respect for the celebration of the Mass, please silence all cell phones and electronic devices at this time. Please stand as we begin our liturgy. Glory to praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ shown forth in the body, glory and praise to you, Christ made just in the Spirit, glory and praise to you, Christ who was seen by the angels, glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ proclaimed among the nations, glory and praise to you, Christ received in faith throughout the whole world, glory and praise to you, Christ exalted in glory, glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My friends, as we prepare ourselves for the celebration, we call to mind the times that we have sinned, and we seek God's forgiveness. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. 
O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. <clears throat> He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. <clears throat> I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways! For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counselor, or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, 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 
for Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the region of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. This morning's scriptures speak about authority. Authority that comes from God. In our first reading, we heard about the servant Shebna. In fact, he wasn't really a servant. He was actually the king's right-hand man, or so that he thought. But one of the things with Shebna was that, even though it doesn't say it in today's scriptures, I did a little checking about why he was having his authority taken from him. And it was because he was in charge of the treasury for the kingdom. He was in charge of making sure that the poorest of the poor had their needs met in their kingdom. And instead, Shebna was using the royal chariots and charioteers for his own personal gain. He was had a sarcophagus that was being made for him out of marble so that people would remember him for years to come. Well, guess what? We do remember him, but not for the reason he wanted. It was because he misused his authority. And that is why God invited the prophet today to tell him his authority had come to an end. Elikim was now going to be the one who would have that authority. And so he took away his robe, his sash, and the keys, all symbols of the authority of the kingdom, and he gave them to Elikim. But of course, Elikim would have recognized that because it was taken away from Shebna, it could be taken away from him. And so he had to make sure that he was doing the right thing with the authority given to him by God to go out and to make sure that he was serving the people of his kingdom, to make sure that he was being honest in all his dealings. For that is what true authority comes from. It was God who took away the authority from Shebna, and it was God who granted it to Elikim. But isn't that true in our lives as well? St. Paul in our second reading also talks about the authority but of the divine authority only. We are called to give glory and praise to God at every moment. St. Paul to the Romans is inviting us to really look, how do we praise God? 
How do we recognize that authority that comes to us as being divinely inspired? Jesus came into the world to redeem each one of us. And it is that authority of Christ that helps us to recognize that there is something greater than this world for us. In our gospel today, we hear it happening to Simon. Jesus asks a simple question of his disciples. Basically, what are the rumors you are hearing about me? Who do people say that I am? And of course, they start saying John the Baptist, Elijah, one of the other prophets. But ultimately, Jesus asks them, who do you say that I am? And Simon is the only one who comes out and says, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Matthew's Gospel is the only one that has him saying, the Son of the living God. But I think it's because Matthew wanted to make sure that people understood that Jesus' authority came because he was the Son of God. He was not just a human being like all of us. There was something greater there in Christ. And Peter was inspired by God the Father, as we hear Jesus tell him. And at this important part, what happened in a lot of the scriptures, if we think back, a name change happened. Abram became Abraham, but Simon becomes Peter, a play on words about being the rock upon the church, for the church to be built upon, I should say. But of course, his rock came from his belief in Christ Jesus. And of course, we also know that this today's scripture is being told to Peter that you are going to be the foundation. But we all know that eventually Peter denies Christ three times. So what happened to that authority? Peter still had it. But he still didn't have a full understanding of what was happening for him and for us as well. It is not until the Holy Spirit comes upon him at that Pentecost event that Peter finally gets it. He understands what it means to be called Peter the Rock. He has to be that foundation upon which the church is built. As our first pope, he finally recognized the true impact of his words of today's gospel. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus sent him and all the disciples out to go out and proclaim that gospel. And from that gift of the authority of Christ to send us out, it still is happening to each one of us today. Each one of us here today has authority in some manner. Sometimes it might be the authority over children. Sometimes it might be the authority because you're the owner of a business. Perhaps you're the manager of a store and you have employees underneath you. Wherever your authority lies, recognize that it comes only from God. And God wants us to use our authority for the positive things. We only need to remember Shebna from our first reading. For that authority will be taken away if we are not properly using it. We need to ask God to help strengthen that grace that comes from that one divine authority that is over us all. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The three persons in one God who give us the grace of being made in the image and likeness of God has given us the redemption and continues to inspire us to do the works of our God. So ask God to help strengthen the authority that you have. And may it always be used for the good of the people around you, that you might lift up one another in that image and likeness that was lifted up upon the cross. For Christ did that out of love for each one of us. We in turn should use our authority out of love to recognize that God has blessed each one of us with some authority wherever it might be but to then ask God for that grace each day to give thanks for that authority and asking for his grace that it might be used properly. 
for authority used wrongly is not really authority at all, and in fact it will be taken away, perhaps not in this world, but in the world to come. Ask God for that grace to truly see the love and authority that comes from him alone. And may we go out today as we are sent forth from this Mass to proclaim God's loving kingdom here on earth. For you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, on whom our faith is built. Now in faith we pray. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us call upon our faithful God to hear our prayers for ourselves, the church, and our world. For all who exercise leadership in the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all persons seeking to serve our country in public office, that they may seek the common good of all in serving others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations and all who work for peace and justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who suffer from COVID-19 and all the sick and their caregivers will receive comfort and healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially our loved ones, and those who have lost their lives to COVID-19. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I invite us now to join in praying our Archdiocesan Synod prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, make our ears to hear, make our eyes to see, make our mouths to speak, make our hearts to see. Make our hands to reach out and touch the world with your love. Amen. Mary, Mother of the Church, pray for us.
Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously upon us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, our Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with all the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. 
Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Olaf and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Bernard our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, with whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share now with one another a sign of Christ's peace. that the Eucharist will be distributed at the end of the service. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Just want to thank you all for showing up here today. This is probably the biggest crowd we've had at 10 o'clock Mass in church, but we also thank all those joining us via uh, live stream or the television masses as well. The, um, the other thing I'd like to announce that Tuesday, Father Kevin should come out of quarantine. He never did have symptoms, but he was diagnosed with the COVID-19, but he is going to be free to come back to work on Tuesday. So thank God for that and a lot less work for Father Wayman and I to have to do now. So we're, we're very happy. So for communion today, 
the distribution. Uh, Hugh will be helping me with distribution. He will be distributing over by this, uh, the organ. I will be here. We ask that the outside sections come forward first, maintaining the social distancing with the little green men on the edges of the pews. Uh, you come up, you can sanitize your hands, and as you come up to the screen, take your mask down, then place your hands flat underneath the screen, and then receive it, and then we ask that you exit from the outsides of the church. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
that when church bells are ringing, 